We've got a loaded show here on Chicago Bears now as Matt Eberflus and Kevin Warren talked at the NFL owners meetings today. Eberflus raving about Caleb Williams, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. We'll talk about that. Also, did he and the Bears tip their hand with their plans at the number nine pick? Kevin Warren providing a huge and maybe even shocking Bears stadium update, which maybe you guys have seen our YouTube short. We'll expand on that here. Also, some more NFL news and notes, rule changes, other notes for the 2024 season for you guys to be aware of. Busy show. We're going to get into all of it coming up in just a moment. But can we get to 91,000 subs ASAP? Uh, appreciate everybody helping us get to 9344. Absolutely fantastic. But if you have not joined the family here at Chicago Bears now, do it now. It's free. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button. 650 plus away from 91,000. The road to 100K is here. We need all of your support to help us get there. We appreciate it. All right, let's talk about this one-on-one -on -one meeting that Matt Eberflus had with Caleb Williams in Los Angeles. Uh, he did reveal today that uh, he spent about an hour and 20 minutes with the projected number one overall pick. Here's what he had to say. He said, what I gleaned from that is how much his mother and father love him very much, very supportive. You could see his character, his football character there, his football knowledge. As I talked through that, it was a really good visit and I'm glad the Bears made this a point to isolate Flus and Caleb during this meeting in Los Angeles which is why they went an extra day early to spend as much time with this guy as they could because I don't care that Matt Eberflus is a defensive guy he's the head coach and the head coach quarterback relationship is absolutely vital sure Shane Waldron's going to be tasked with helping develop him on the field but Matt Eberflus is still going to be involved in that development even if it's not as much like quarterback technique stuff and learning how to read coverages, although I think Flus can provide uh, insight into that too, being a sharp defensive mind. Like, Caleb Williams and Matt Eberflus need to build a strong relationship, and I'm glad they've made it a point to get that process started, and uh, it sounds like that's gone pretty well so far. Matt Eberflus also did an interview with Tom Pelissero on the NFL Network just a couple of minutes and uh, had this to say about Caleb. He's an outstanding young man. Everything looks great in terms of his personality, his character, his football knowledge. We got a lot of information there. I think one thing that's become pretty damn clear is that the Bears really like, if not love, Caleb Williams. Like, both Ryan and Matt have raved about the USC quarterback these past two days and have cracked smiles when discussing him. Like, it, it's really not even a secret anymore, and it doesn't need to be when you have the number one pick. Like, they're basically – tattooing on their forehead we're drafting Caleb Williams without the tattoo part right like they're not going to flat out come out and say it with a month to go here but it's about as obvious it can be without being a done deal what's what's going on here Caleb's going to be the pick uh barring some insane disaster that happens over the next month I don't think that's going to happen so uh get your 13 jerseys unless he wears a different number Keenan Allen could be 13 uh get those dusted off because uh Caleb Williams is going to be this team's quarterback Rate Caleb Williams as a prospect. You know, Madden style, scale it from 1 to 100. How would you rate him as a prospect? I think as a prospect, he's in the mid-high 90s. Now, what he'll be as a rookie in the NFL, uh, you know, if he's in the 80s, you'd be pretty happy. Uh, let me know how you would rate the USC quarterback as a prospect. Are the Bears draft plans at number 9 revealed? Well, I think they're tipping their hand in, tell, in terms of telling you what is a realistic option, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as you're not saying we're doing this and that's it. I think they're remaining flexible here, but I do like how open Ryan Poles is in particular, and even Matt Eberflus has gotten better about that recently, uh, which is nice to see as well. Herb Howard tweeted this out, kind of summarizing what Flus said here. Uh, saying that in addition to the top pick, the Bears have the number nine pick in a draft where the first eight players may be offensive positions. Eberflus said that the Bears will focus on a player that either helps the quarterback or affects the quarterback with the ninth pick. Ryan Poles mentioned wide receiver, offensive tackle, and edge on Monday. And those are three positions that either help the quarterback or impact the quarterback, right? Like, if you get an edge, it's going to get after the other quarterback, which is going to help your quarterback in creating short fields. If it's a receiver or offensive tackle, it's either another weapon or a protector for Caleb Williams. So I put this list together the other day, and I'll kind of throw it here. Again, a few of these guys definitely won't be there. Like, I'd be shocked if Marvin Harrison was there. Um, 
probably one of the other receivers is gone as well. But I do think there's a decent chance one of those three receivers gets to nine. Uh, Joe Alt may or may not be there. Dallas Turner may or may not be there. But out of these ten guys, Jared Verse, Leatu Latu, Byron Murphy, Talise Fuaga, Olu Fashano, like the, one of these guys, I and mean, really five or six of them, are going to be there at number nine. So you've got options at those premium positions. You want to get another weapon? Well, good chance one of the top three guys are there. If not, good chance the top offensive tackle is there. If not, you can get the top edge. Like, not all of these guys are going to be gone before because we know at least three, if not four quarterbacks, are going to go in the top eight, and it sounds like it could be four quarterbacks in the top five. So uh, the Bears are going to have options there. More to come with this and uh, more out of the owners' meetings in a second, but today's show is sponsored by Game Time. You know what sucks? Thinking you have tickets to an event that you ordered online and never having them digitally sent to you. You get to the ballpark, you get to the venue, and you try, they ask for your ticket to be swiped. You show them the email, you're like, that's ah, not the ticket, and then you're just kind of just out of luck. Well, that's not going to happen anymore. Not with game time. No longer. They give you an easy and painless way to purchasing tickets just hours and sometimes even minutes before an event starts. Game time sp specialty is last-minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. In the app, you'll see the best value tickets for every event coming up in real time. You can see your exact vantage point of the venue you're attending. And best of all, game time offers the lowest price guaranteed. You got the Cubs. You got the White Sox. These were kind of vantage point uh, viewpoints uh, for the Bulls game last night there on the right. And you'll be able to see that with upcoming games as well. By the way, Bulls got to get it together. Uh, trying to sneak into that play in tournament. So here's what you need to do. Download the Game Time app today. Use code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off your first order. It's code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Search in your app store. There's also a link in the comments and in the description. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off. We appreciate Game Time for sponsoring today's show. Go have some fun. Go to get some tickets to some of your favorite events. All right, uh, here's Matt Eberflus talking about a little bit more just the roster situation and why these two premium draft picks are important. He said, we've had two years to build the foundation, and now we're bringing in these blue players, talking about blue chip players, at picks one and nine. And I think it's interesting that he said this and important for you guys to understand, just because the Bears only have four picks in this draft, they might not trade down. Ryan Poles has said it. Evaluators around this league have said it. This is not a deep draft. A lot of people view this as a three or four round draft. So if the Bears are sitting there at nine and there's a blue chip guy that they don't feel like they can pass up on, they might just take him. Now, Ryan Poles yesterday was kind of talking about tiers of prospects and say you get to nine and there's four players they like. Well, they could be willing to trade down two or three spots. Like maybe Denver at 12 moves up to nine and gets a quarterback. Like something like that could happen. But if you're at nine and you like one or two guys and then it's a tier drop-off, you're probably just going to take one of those players. So don't be surprised. This team needs to continue to add blue chips. Like, I would rather get one blue chip player at nine than what teams call a red chip player at 15 and then, you know, some rotation guy in the third or fourth round or something like that. So uh, let's get some blue chip talent in here. Yes, I'm open to trading down, but don't trade down just to trade down. Like, the Bears don't have massive holes on this roster anymore. Like, Fill holes that you do have with premium players and go from there. What do you guys think the Bears should do with the number nine pick? Do you think they should keep it or trade down? Type K for keep or T for trade. Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Let's get to a stadium update here. Kevin Warren talking earlier today as well. And listen, he doubled down that the Bears' focus is building a new stadium in Chicago and on the lakefront. Here's what he had to say. Quote, Right now, we're putting our energy to downtown Chicago, to the museum campus, just from an energy and resource standpoint. Our plan is here in the not-too-distant future to be able to get together, lay out a plan, not only with renderings, but video, financial plans so we can display it to the public. We're getting close to having a plan ready to take public. The plan will be to put a shovel in the ground on the lakefront. Now, until that happens, until there is a shovel in the ground, this is not a done deal, but... When you listen to Kevin Warren talk, and we've heard about him rave about the city of Chicago and the desire of being there, like, it seems genuine. Now, could there be a negotiation tactic still going on? Could he be trying to, like, send a message to Arlington Heights? Like, hey, this is your last chance, man. Like, come to the table and get us a better tax break. Otherwise, we're proceeding with Chicago. 
sure, there's probably some of that being played, but the more he says this, the more I feel like he does want this to happen in Chicago, just like he was able to do it in Minneapolis, which is considered one of the best stadiums in the NFL. Here's Kevin Warren as well saying, we are the largest landowner in Arlington Heights right now. We own a beautiful piece of land. We'll stay in communication with Arlington Heights, but the focus now has to be on Chicago to give us the best opportunity for success. And look, I got to be honest, I'm surprised at how this has played out because when Ted Phillips was still here, they bought that 300 plus acre property in Arlington Heights. They tore down the racetrack and it was just kind of obvious where it was going or it seemed that way. Like, hey, you're going to build this incredible stadium in the suburbs. You're going to have all this land or A, you're going to own it. B, you're going to have all this land around it where you can build restaurants, hotels, uh, other business ventures. You could get uh, casino setups, all kinds of stuff, which look, the lakefront stadium could be awesome and there's benefits to staying in Chicago, but you don't have all this land where you could build all this stuff and you're not going to own the stadium entirely. It still, to me, seems like Arlington Heights is the best play in terms of maximizing dollars and revenue, but if they don't like how Arlington Heights is negotiating with the taxes and this and that, and they feel like Chicago has acted in good faith, I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe that's that, that's where this is heading at this point, and if you're like, oh, Kevin Warren doesn't know what he's doing with financials, this and that, well, you got to remember, A, he's done this before in Minnesota. And B, here's what he had to say on that. He said, one thing I can guarantee you, I'm fiscally conservative and I'm financially responsible. So anything that we recommend from a financial standpoint will be very well thought out. And you got to remember, ownership is not just going to let him do some reckless thing, right? Like, you're, you're, they're not going to do something wildly crazy. Now, I would still make an argument from a non-business major standpoint that the 300 plus acres in Arlington Heights and owning your own stadium seems like a better way to maximize your dollars. But Kevin Warren also did this in downtown Minneapolis. And again, that is considered a state-of-the-art setup in the NFL. So I think it's one of those where it's like, you shouldn't blindly trust this situation, but let's see the plan. They say a plan is going to be public soon on what things would look like in Chicago. And let's see where it goes from there. So Still things to play out. Certainly nothing finalized, but it kind of seems like this is leaning towards Chicago at this point as the pendulum continues to sway back and forth. Now, what do you think the better stadium option is for the Bears? Type C for Chicago or A for Arlington Heights. Pros and cons to both. If it's purely about dollars, I do think it's Arlington Heights, but uh, let me know what you guys think. All right, some more NFL news and notes uh, before we get out of here. Hall of Fame game. Bears, baby. Bears, Texans. Three Hall of Famers heading in. New kickoff rule passed, by the way, and here's what's cool. The kickoff was kind of taken out of the game last year. Now it's going to be back with kind of the XFL model where I'll simplify it by this. Basically, the kicker is on his own at his own 35, and the guys, the other 10 teammates, are way further up, just five yards away from the return team alignment, and the design of it is to eliminate – full speed collisions basically so it's a safer play and what's going to be cool is at the hall of fame game this new rule will be in place Devin Hester who is kind of the first guy to get into the hall of fame as a returner will kind of be there to see the return come back into the game just in a new model so that's going to be a cool scene to see uh trade deadline push back a week I like that uh gives teams an extra week to determine if they're going to be buyers or sellers uh there is going to be a Christmas game on Wednesday uh because Christmas falls on Wednesday this year which I personally, just from a personal standpoint, don't love. Uh, I could see the Bears being on this, by the way. There's going to be a lot of hype by, around that team or around this team, obviously. So you've got that. One more that just came in that I'll just verbalize here. Two players can now be placed on IR, designated to return before roster cutdown day from 90 to 53 players. So if you remember last year, for example, with the Bears, it was clear Tevin Jenkins was going to go on IR, but the old rules, you had to carry him through on your initial 53, and then a day later, you could place him on IR and bring a player back. But of course, the risk there is a player could have been poached by another team. Now you've got some wiggle room. You've got two spots where you can do that. So if guys are going to miss the first month on IR anyway, you can place them on IR. Uh, and then a couple of guys that may not have made the 53 that can help you in the short term can now make your uh, initial 53-man roster, which I think is a good thing. It's going to lead to like kind of less like shuffling and chaos, I think, on roster cutdown day for other teams poaching players. But I think it's good for these teams to be able to pr protect themselves just a little bit as well. 
All right, busy stuff. A lot of guy, uh, a lot of stuff going on with the NFL. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. We'll have a lot more. Uh, another video later today, so stay tuned. Until then, bear down.